This is the Insta360 X3. And as a professional filmmaker, I like to get the most from every single camera that I use, no matter how large or how small. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my workflow for exporting incredible shots from this tiny little wonder camera. Let's go. By the way, if you're into the outdoors and you wanna see how I use this camera in my adventure videos, you might wanna have a little look around. Now there are quite a few ways to export footage from this camera, but I'm gonna concentrate on the two that I use the most. One, a simple method using the smartphone app that I use mostly for vertical edits for social media. And two, using the desktop app to get the best quality exports possible. And maybe one fun bonus method that I'll keep to the end. Okay, right, let's start with the app. Let's get it loaded up. You can do your edits over Wi-Fi directly from the camera streaming to your phone, uh, but sometimes I like to download the files to my phone because I find it's a little bit quicker sometimes. So I've got a file here that I want to work with today. Um, and when I click on that file and open it up, what you'll notice is at the top, you've got three options. You've got auto, snap, and edit. And I'll quickly talk about auto because auto is for the really lazy <laughs> if you really really don't want to have to do anything and you want super super easy edits go to auto hit the analyze button it'll analyze your footage and it'll just basically create a video for you that you can then it'll even have music sometimes auto will give you actually quite nice edits and other times it won't work at all but if you're in a real hurry it can be a nice way to make an edit let it do its thing and then you can select the clip and then you can export Export to phone album, export. And that's you got an edit in literally seconds. Now I like a little bit more control than that, so the method I like to use the most is called snap. And what Snap lets you do is Snap lets you using the inbuilt gyroscope in the phone. Uh, you press and hold this button here. And as you press it, you can slide your finger up and down to change the perspective. And then you rotate around your entire body to select the angle that you want. It's really, really cool. Let's go to export, export the phone album and the files are really, really, so they're pretty much instantly exported. Well, now the third option you got in here is edit and edit is the older method and it's basically a more advanced version of snap but i'm not going to talk about it in this video because i've already made an in-depth video about how to use the edit and the viewfinder workflow and keyframes and you can go and watch that video if you really want to find out how to do it that way okay so next is the method that will give you the best quality footage possible and that is using the insta360 studio software on a desktop computer Let's take a look. Okay, I've got Insta360 Studio is open and on the right here, I've got the files from the X3. So I'm just gonna drag them all in because it's sometimes difficult to find the exact one you want. So I'll drop them in. It'll load them up into their individual projects and then I'll go through and I'll find the one that I want to edit. There are a number of things I can do in the studio. You can see as I scroll with a mouse, I can zoom in and out and I can click and drag and <laughs> do all kinds of of weird things. Now, the quickest way I could export this is just to track myself. I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna click along here to where I want the start of the clip to be. And I might just grab that hand on the left there just to reduce the overall length of the shot so it starts there. And then I go over here to the right hand side. You see here you get deep track. So I'm gonna click and drag over myself, hit start tracking, and that will track me. And if I leave that as is, it'll give me a video somewhat like this. So a bit of an unrealistic field of view. So I'm just gonna adjust that a bit. So, so yeah, that's a little bit more natural looking. Okay, and that gives me a good clip already, which I could just go straight ahead and export. And I'll show you the export settings I use. I'm gonna start export. 
here's your export dialog. Now, my advice would be to set up a preset um, so you don't have to change these settings every time. But what I do is for resolution, it's currently 1920 by 1080. I can change this so it's 4K, which is 3840 by 2160. Now, even if you're only using this on the 1080 timeline, I find this does actually give an increase in quality. Now, for encoding format, we have a number of options in here. Now, the one that will give you the absolutely best quality is ProRes 422, but it takes up a lot of storage space. So what I like to do is sort of a compromise between quality and performance is I usually pick H.264 and I set the bit rate to 100. And then I go up here and I can hit save. And I can save that as Steve's high quality, can not spell quality, quality preset and then I can use that every time I um, export a video. And I can either add it to the queue or I can export it. Let's add it to the queue because we're going to do a couple more edits. Okay so that's it in the queue. Now I just want to show you a different way I could have worked with this video and it's using keyframes. So a keyframe is you basically line up the shot with whatever you want to look at. Hit this little plus here. That adds well a keyframe move along in the video and um, so I think by the time I'm going under here I'd like to the camera to point at myself change the camera angle you can even zoom in and out hit plus the keyframe and the app will automatically animate between those two angles something that can be good to do here is if you click on that line you can see you get these different options um, and these different options just basically can smooth out the animation between the frames so it doesn't look quite as robotic. And it's good to sort of generally play around with these and just find the ones which give the best results. I'm gonna leave it on flat for now. Okay, so I'm coming through there. I'd like the camera to point maybe in towards those rocks until about here. Yeah, and then by the time I'm climbing, I'd like it to point in back down again, let's see, there we go, a bit there, that angle, hit that keyframe, and then move up here, yeah, that's pretty good, and then the video will just animate between those keyframes I've set. Okay, then I can export, add it to the queue, you can see it's picked my high quality preset automatically. There we go. By the way, if you're thinking of buying an X3, check out the links in the description. If you buy through one of those links, I get a small percentage at no extra cost to you. Helps pay for this video. And sometimes, like around Black Friday, it's 360 have got other deals going on or freebies when you buy the camera. So check out the links. Okay, I want to show you one last commonly used trick um, that 360 camera is really good for, and that is hyperlapses. So do the hyperlapse, get to the start of your video. Point the camera in the direction you would like it to point in, put a keyframe, and then just kind of go along the video, making sure that the camera roughly stays pointing in the right direction, maybe making a small adjustment if you need to. And let's see, we'll get a bit there. Add the keyframe, and then I add speed. So I go to this uh, time shift feature here. Drag that red bar out the full length, and then I can select my speed. 16 is really good. Make sure motion blur is turned down here in the bottom right. And we'll head that off to the queue. Add the queue. And then let's export our videos and take a look at them. Hit export. Okay, finally, I just want to show you how color correction can make a big difference to the perceived quality of your footage. I've got my shot open here. I've got my color panel open. Depending on what editing software you're using, this might be different. This is Adobe Premiere Pro, and I'm just going to show you typical changes I would make. So um, I would often maybe bring up the shadows a little bit, pull down the highlights, and then increase the contrast. See that? See the difference that makes? Um, and then I'll maybe boost my saturation a little bit. And if I want to, if I want this to look slightly film-like, I can mess around with the curves. Put a dot in the middle, put a dot there, pull that dot down, grab that bottom drop dot, pull that up a bit, and you'll see that sort of change the changes the shadows from nasty crushed blacks to more sort of a grey. Add a bit more contrast into that. Go down, mess around here. Let's add a little bit of a vignette into it around the edges, and then before, after. So don't just leave your footage as it comes 
off the camera. So just 60 seconds to do that, and it makes quite a nice difference to the footage. Okay, time for a little bonus method now. If you go to the homepage in the app and tap on stories, you then have, and there's lots of other things you could do in here, but there's Shot Lab, and Shot Lab has all these preset shots that let you do these really, really creative shots, again, with very, very little effort. And the one I really like at the minute is Sky Swap. So I'm gonna show you that one. So you tap into it, you select use this theme, and then you gotta pick a shot that you wanna use it with. So I'm gonna use it with that same shot. Hit select it. Okay, and then what you wanna do is you wanna select what you want to change the sky to be. I quite like the galaxy. So you're gonna select the galaxy. It then generates a preview video with the sky swapped. And you can just export it at this point, but I like a little bit more control. So I go to that export, export button on the top right, go to create story. I'll export and then it'll open up an editor where you can then work with the footage. And there's lots you can do in here. You can add music, you can add text, you can put stickers on the footage. It's like, there's a lot built into this 360 app. It's really, really cool. But what I wanna do is I wanna track myself through the shot. So I'm gonna tap on that clip. Um, and if you go along, you'll notice there's some little dots on it. Those are keyframes. I'm just gonna delete those. I don't want those. And then I'm going to go down here to the bottom left, tap on reframe, tap deep track. The tracking in this 360 is really good. Tap on me and then select me and then hit start tracking. And that will track my movements throughout the entire video. Once that's done, I can adjust the field of view a little bit and I end up with this shot. And how cool is that? That is a shot that you would literally spend an entire day making in a program like After Effects and you can do it tappity tap in under a minute. It's amazing and it's a really, really fun way to get some cool looking shots. Okay, so there you have it. A quick and easy method and a high quality method of exporting footage from the Insta360 X3. Now, don't forget, there's a ton of extra features in there I didn't even cover, so make sure to kind of experiment and try all your different things in there yourself. And don't forget to check out that viewfinder tutorial. Let me know down in the comments which of those methods you prefer. And as always, thanks for watching. Maybe someday I'll catch you in the trails. Bye-bye.